Lucas C says, I want to run more dynamic combat encounters, and I think the problem stems from a lack of interesting environments or battle arenas. I try to get lair actions and things to change up the surroundings, but having trouble developing a process to address the combat environment during prep. How do you approach making a more engaging and dynamic combat space? I have good news for you, Lucas, and good news for all of us. I am working on a book with my friends Scott Gray and Teo Sabadia where you're covering topics exactly like this. I'm not ready to announce it yet, but I am going to give you a sneak preview. And I can tell you, it covers some of the things that you're that you're talking about. Patrons of Sly Flourish, by the way, already know about this book and have already seen other things. There's lots of cool stuff. If you want to get in early on all of this, you can become a patron of Sly Flourish and learn all about this stuff. And in fact, I will probably release this chapter I want to check with Scott and Teos to make sure we're all cool with it, but I'll probably release this chapter to patrons so they can take a look at it. It's a draft, first draft. And the answer is, and here's, here's, here's the, the chapter. This is, a, this is a first draft. I think, you know, I, I wrote it and Scott and Teos left comments on it. And I don't even think I address their comments. So it's really rough, but it gives you an idea of what I would recommend, which is this idea of a combat encounter checklist. Now, this is something I used to do a lot in fourth edition times, and I don't do it about as much now. But the, the idea is there are all these different variables that you can include in a, in, in, a, in a battle, in a battle arena, as you say, that can extend it. I wouldn't recommend it doing for all battles. In fact, I would probably only do it for big boss fights. I don't think I would worry about doing it for like hallway encounters or anything like that. But these are a few different things that you can consider when you're building, when you're building out your combat encounter. And it's a nice, easy checklist. Who are your monsters? And pick, in, in some cases, you don't want to just have one kind of monster. You want a couple different kinds of monsters. You actually have these ideas of monster roles, which they used to have in fourth edition. Who are your backline monsters? Who are your frontline monsters? Which monsters synergize well with, another, with one another? Which ones have like different things that help each other out? So you can think about that. What are the, what are the monsters and what's the, the synergy between these monsters that you're going to drop into battle? What's the location itself? What makes it cool? What makes it interesting? Terrain-wise, what makes it kind of, what's the shape of it how do you get the freaking characters to get out of the doorway that's a big one like how do you get them into the room right how do you get them out there so what's the fantastic location what are some zone wide effects a zone wide effect is sort of a lightweight panic that's affecting everybody and i have some examples here an unholy crypt mean that healing is only half as effective right the blazing fires that are removing any fire resistance psychic whales that create a dc 10 con check to successfully cast a spell so different ways that you can put a whole layer on top of the whole thing so it's always going on while you're in this battle this is always going on you can of course tweak this a little bit and say well it's always going on because of that crazy psychic pillar if we destroy the psychic pillar it goes away so you can do it. You know, zone, uh, uh, the zone causes all spells to fire off wild magic. Every time you cast a spell, wild magic kicks up. So those are examples of, of zone-wide effects. Traps and hazards. What are specific areas where they will either trigger off a trap or there's a hazard that they have to avoid? Now, if you put them too far out of the way, they're just never going to come into play. But you also don't want them to like really limit the, limit the battle either. You want the battle to be dynamic. So you want to be careful about where you put these traps and hazards so they don't just make, again, you don't want your characters like cuddled up in a ball, not wanting to go anywhere because like, oh, I'll step on caltrops if I go out there. So you want to be careful about how you place these traps and hazards out there. A big one are advantageous positions. It's really easy for DMs, GMs, GMs and DMs, to build battle arenas so that they're always against the characters, where everything is going against the characters. I, you go into a room, lava's spewing up, but it's all fire elementals who are immune, and your fire resistance is down, but, and they do like extra fire damage. Like, you don't want to set it up where it's just all against the characters. Like, that, that sucks. So what are some ways, and this is a good way to get them away from the stupid doorway. If you say, oh, way up high, there's this ledge that you can jump up onto. And if you can get up to that ledge, you have advantage on anybody that's down below. That's one of my favorites is like put high positions that are risky to get to. But once you get there, you get advantage on the people below. I really dig that. I have the high ground. So what are some advantageous positions? Another one might be there could be a whole, an arcane circle. And if a spellcaster can get to the arcane circle, they can get advantage on their spell attacks and creatures have disadvantage on DCs against their spells. Stuff like that. But the wizard has to get the hell over there into this risky spot in order to have this advantage. And then tell them that they can do so. Tell them that like you, because you're, this is going to be one we're going to talk about in one of the future questions. Because you are trained in arcana, you know that if you were to stand over in that circle, you would have these benefits. 
get them to go. Don't, don't hide the fact that they get these benefits. Tell them. What are other interactable objects? What are things that you can have in this room that they can dork with? They have levers that you could pull that open up pits. Crumbling statues that can easily collapse. Pillars that collapse part of the ceiling. Chandeliers upon which to swing. What are all the different things that you can put here that characters... It's a jungle gym. Make a jungle gym out of it. Put a whole bunch of crap up there that characters can do stuff with. What are areas for... Co cover's an easy one. What are some areas for cover that characters can go and hide behind so they can get their, the plus two bonus? I really go with the cover what is it called like light cover is easy to get hard you know heavy cover is hard to get whatever they call that what are some fan difficult or fantastic terrain a little bit like hazards but what are some things that you can do to the terrain overall to make it interesting like there's a chasm there's a br rickety bridge over a deep chasm section of anti-gravity where if you go inside you actually flipped up to the ceiling what are some things you can do an anti-life area where living creatures are vulnerable to necrotic damage stuff like that then a big one is the goal change the goal of the battle instead of just kill the bad guys what is the thing the characters are trying to accomplish in this maybe it's i have to get over that platform and destroy that sphere so that no more undead will spawn right what are the things that you can do to make the goal different for a battle so though that's that's this checklist right and i don't, I don't think it covers absolutely everything but it covers a lot of stuff right and you probably don't want to do all of this. If you did all of this in every encounter, that would be overwhelming. But you can go through and ask yourself, you know, oh, which, which of these are the ones that I want to drop into this particular battle? Maybe it's only one or two. Maybe it's a few of these. In a boss fight, you, might, you, you, could, you could add quite a few of these. So those are some ways to kind of shake up your encounter. This is something that I've been doing since the fourth edition days. I still do it for boss fights. I also go really lightweight for many of the battles that I go. So don't feel like you have to do this all the time. It's really meant for big juicy chewy battles and if you like this kind of advice if you're looking for this keep an eye out for my next book the next book that i'm working on with my friends teos and scott teos teos abadia and scott gray we have a, a book that we're working on we're probably 90 90 percent done with the first draft and we are working on the kickstarter and we are hoping we are almost certainly going to launch the kickstarter march 1st so you'll hear you're going to start hearing about it next month in february and you're going to hear a lot about it in March. And I'm really excited for it. It's going to be really, really good. I'm really excited for it. And I'm really glad this OGL stuff is behind us because now we're really excited about doing it. Oh, I'm so happy. Lucas, I hope that answered your question.